Hi guys, I'm going to talk to you about a story today. I'm going to be a little light in the story because it's going to be in my podcast. It's about the day I got made to become a made member in the Gambino family. Quite a few guys knew I was headed that day to become a made guy. Frankie the Chico, Frankie the Chico's father, Boozy, because he was in Tato's crew. Me and Tato's son, Charlie Boy, were going at the same time to be made. We went to a guy, uh, Frank the Wap, his house in Brooklyn. It was set to be done. I think they were making 10 guys that day. Louis Bolito, my good friend, knew what was happening as well. He wasn't a made guy, so he couldn't really be in the loop. But um, he did work already. And uh, he was due to become a made guy. He was with the old man, Johnny Rizzo. You heard his name a whole bunch of times. So uh, he was real happy for me. And uh, I think it was one of the best days of my life. I'm not going to go through the whole ceremony. I'll do that in my podcast. But uh, I went to this house. And uh, we got made. Me and Charlie Boy and... After it was done, the ceremony was done, we got in Tato's car and we drove back to Tato's club and uh, Boozy came over, Frankie Chico came over, Louie was on the side a little bit, again he's not in that loop, and Tato said, Sammy the Bull, so I'm making Austria, meaning a made member, he said, Boozy is a friend of ours, Said the same thing about Frankie the Chico. We hugged, we kissed. It was beautiful. Johnny Rizzo was there and uh, he congratulated me as well. Now, I did a lot of things. There's a lot of stories that his name pops up in. I did a lot of things with him and I was, you know, super excited. After a while, we took a very short walk. In the street, me, Tato, and Johnny Rizzo, senior. And Tato said, do you have anybody that you're going to propose to become a friend of ours? And uh, I was like a little puppy because I was waiting any minute he would have probably said his son. And of course, Louis Melito, who did a lot of things and really wanted to become a made guy. And Rizzo shocked me. He said, no, Tato. No, everyone around me is a piece of shit, including my son. I was completely thrown back by that answer. I, I couldn't even believe it. I almost said something, but it really wasn't my place to say anything or... So I just shut my mouth and a little while later, we all separated and Louis Melito was waiting for me and he came in, he gave me a hug and a kiss and, you know, how was it? I said, it was beautiful, Louis. It was a beautiful thing. I was a little heartbroken from what I had just heard. And uh, he asked me, did they talk about me? Did they mention me? I couldn't even answer him. First of all, at this point, I took the oath. These things are private. They're not meant for anybody's ears. I didn't want to be made and break a rule so quickly. So I told him, you know, there really wasn't much said about anybody except for the people who were getting, becoming a made guy. But uh, Louis, I'm not even supposed to talk about it, but you know, you know you'll be all right, bro. You're good, and uh, me and you tight. You got the old man, Johnny Rizzo. I didn't want to make him feel horrible. And I said, you got me. It, it, something will happen in the, in the near future. You know that. Come on. And uh, we broke it up. We left. I couldn't wait to get away from him because, not because I didn't want to talk to him, but I was heartbroken that, I had to know that and conceal it as well. 
I talked with Tato again a couple of times about it. And I said, you know, about his son, that's his business. But Louis did work for the family. He did things. He was a money maker. He, he did everything he had to do in the life. He's not. I, Tato, I go back with Louis so many years. He's not a piece of shit, bro. I mean, is there anything I could say? And he told me no. Sammy, I mean, there's nothing you could say. He's under the old man Rizzo, and that's how he feels, and there's nothing you could say or do. Just get it out of your mind. I went on with Louie a little bit, and a question or two would pop up here or there. He didn't pry on it really too much. I think he understood the life a little bit, and he knew I was in an awkward position now. Here we are, super friends, and I don't want to talk about certain things in goes in Austria and what happened, what, what the ceremony was like. And I would just play it off like, Louis, I don't want to ruin it for you, bro. Someday you'll go through this. And I would walk away from it. But it drove me crazy. It really did bother me. So one day I grabbed Tato and I said, Tato, you're my Gabrizin, you're my captain. You're Johnny Rizzo's captain, right? Yes. So Johnny Rizzo is with you. Louis Melito, his son, everybody who's with Johnny Rizzo ultimately is with you, right? Yeah. Anybody who's with me is ultimately with you. Yeah. Could I propose Louis Melito? No. You can't. Why can't you make him? He's with you. Ultimately, Johnny Rizzo's with you. He's with you. You don't need nobody's permission. You're the captain. You're in charge. He thought for a while. He said, take a walk with me. I took a walk with him. And he said, you really love this guy. Yeah, I do. I do. And he's there in a split second all the time. To be labeled like that is breaking my heart. He says, I'll do it. Don't say a word to anyone. I'll propose him myself. Weeks later, he told me, there's a meeting. Go tell Louie to come down dressed in a suit, shirt, tie. I had a grin from ear to ear. I knew what was going to happen. He said, you can't come, but you'll wait here by the club just like they waited for you. I got Louie, called him up, said, Louie, tomorrow you got an appointment. Wear a suit, shirt, tie. Meet me, I'll come to the club with you. You got to go somewhere with Tato. He knew. Could you talk to me? No. No. Just go with the old man. He grabbed me, hugged me, kissed me. I'm getting emotional thinking about this, thinking about this story, because uh, later on in life, a lot of things changed. But right now, I'll stay with this story. He went there, and I waited for him to come back. But I knew how long it would be I drove around the neighborhood a little bit to go to meet somebody, pick up a few dollars. And uh, there was the old man, Johnny Rizzo, standing on the corner. There was a club. It was a gay club. He owned it. So sometimes he would be there. He didn't go in and run it or do anything like that. But he was around that place. He would meet people there. 
sometimes not in the place but outside. And there he was outside standing with three or four guys. And I thought to myself, while he's standing there talking with them guys, his guy, his main guy, is being made. I went back to the club, Tato's club, to wait for Louis to get back. Sure enough, a couple of hours went by, and Louis Melito came back, and Tato introduced Louis to me as Omega Nostra, meaning Omega guy. We hugged, we kissed. He says, Sammy, I owe you. You don't owe me nothing. You don't owe me nothing. You earned it, bro. You belong where you are. You earned it. He said, what am I going to say to the old man? You can't say nothing. There's an introduction. The third party has to introduce you. I know him as a friend now, meaning a made guy, and now I know you. He's by the club on Utrecht Avenue with a few guys. Let's get in the car and go over there. Don't say nothing, don't act stupid in any way. And I'm going to introduce you to him. I know he's going to be in shock. But me and you have a reputation. I don't think he's going to argue. I don't think he's going to do anything or say anything. I think he's going to be a little afraid. What are you going to do? I'm going to introduce you as a friend to him. If he wants to take it out on anybody, it'll be my fault, not yours. We got in the car. We drove there. He was excited. On the way there, I told him, why'd you want to thank me? After I became a friend, Tato told me what you did. We parked the car. We got out. We started walking across the street. We got to Rizzo. There was another three, four guys standing around him. Rizzo parted himself from those guys, walked over, didn't Louis, this guy, he didn't go to him. He came to me. And that's Cosa Nostra. We're both friends. We're both made members. And he shook my hand. And I shook his hand real hard. And I looked at Louis and I said, John, Louis is our Mega Nostra. Louis, John is our Mega Nostra. His eyes were this big. Couldn't believe that his right-hand man became a friend, became a made guy. But he was a classy guy, Rizzo. I always liked him. And he said, welcome aboard, Louis. You deserve it. We stayed a little while, and we left. We were going to go to Nathan's and have some hot dogs. And, and he said... Bro, you the devil, bro. I looked at him. I'm the devil? A good devil. I would have never got made, Tato told me. I would have never got made with that label. Yeah. You're devil enough to not give a fuck about nothing. I love you. I love you too. Me and Louie were like this before, and if there's any way to get closer, we were like that after for a very, very long time. Years later, he was killed. I was there. In my podcast, you'll understand why he got killed. You'll understand why I was there. It would be said that I killed him. I didn't, but I was there. I was there for a reason. That when you killed, nobody would spit on him or kick him while he was down. He died because he had too much balls. Not because he was dishonorable in any way, shape, or form. 
but he was too much of a man. And he died for it. I wanted him to die like a man. That's the only reason I was there. I'll talk to you at another time. If you like this video, press like. Subscribe to it. It gives me more strength to do stories. There's higher-ups everywhere. Sometimes they don't want you to say certain things. If I have a lot of subscribers, they take the muzzle off of me. So subscribe. It'll help me tell stories that you want to hear. Adios, motherfucker.